Hi, I'm Luke Dicker. I compose for, for films and I do that most of the time for the symphony orchestra. You have to avoid that the situation uh, is developing that way. My preparation is for me a, a guarantee uh, that after I made my decisions, I can work free. Without thinking about what is here and what is there. I have to get rid of my back office. I only have the front office when I start uh, composing. If I make mistakes or I get hindered, that will make me insecure and I have to change things or whatever. I start talking as much as I can with the director, what he wants from the movie. Speak with the, with the cutter. I speak with the, with the producer as well, what he thinks of it. Most of the time, if you speak with, with a producer, they have an idea and they appreciate it if you ask. And that, that all is for me insurance that I, uh, I can get rid of all this, not having problems on my way. If you have to struggle during the process, it will disturb the, the creative process. And the creative process is a flow where you in. It has to be a wave that that's, that supports you, that, uh, that carries you, that <laughs> carries you. That happens. Uh, sometimes you are sort of exhausted, of you, you just don't do what to do. You have to develop the tools to get rid of your uh, writer's block. Most of the time you have to get ar around it. The writer's block is like a roadblock. Okay, you can further. But then, before the right, you take a right, and a left, and a left, and a right again. And so you are on the track, uh, you are, then you are around the right the block. Like in The Force Man, that is what movie we were talking about. That there was a scene that I didn't know what to do with it. I had the difficulty of telling Paul that I didn't know. I composed something, I know it's not going to be right, but I'm composing. And I give Paul a call to see uh, what he thinks of it. And then, uh, well, 10 minutes later, Paul <laughs> came up that stair and I showed him here and there uh, what I had sort of said, but uh, I'm not sure, you, so you have to tell me something. And then he, he told me, okay, what happened here is that I didn't have my day. Uh, the scene here, I mean, needed for the movie, but it's not the best scene in the movie. And uh, what I want from them is this and this and this. And then I knew what to do. He had to tell me instead of that I could see it for myself from the movie. And then I could just make the music for it because I knew then what exactly was meant by the scene. For, for, for body parts, that was one of my most successful productions because it brought me the, uh, the Saturn, Saturn Award. Award. The Saturn Award in the, I was at the end, I'd written the whole score but not the title music. I wait with the writing the title music till the very end because then I have all my ideas and worked out and everything. And it was two days before the recording and I didn't have a clue what I would do there. What I sometimes do if I want to sort of getting into an atmosphere where I can solve that, I go to, uh, to a cafe late night. Everybody drinks a little bit, uh, full. A, a, a lot of noise, and I, I know people there because I usually go to, to a cafe where I know people. I don't really speak with people. I just stand there, I drink one or two drinks, and I go home. And then I am filled with the energy uh, of, of people communicating, talking. My head is sort of empty when I do that, uh, after I've been standing there for half an hour or, or an hour. On my bike, I drove home and I turned into my street and my head was empty. After 100 meters in my street, I knew what, what, what I would do. And I knew that that was going to happen. Exactly. There was a process that I knew by myself. So your tip is party more. It's, it's, yes. Don't be afraid to go to a party if you're composing. <laughs> if you have a writer's block. Yeah. <laughs>
uh, actually have three favorite movies. In the first place, uh, The Forest Man. That's where I developed my methods, writing for the, for the movies. And that was successful. The second one is, uh, is, is Body Parts. Uh, it brought me the Saturn Award, which makes it very favorite, of course, as well. There I was able to work out my uh, or orchestral abilities. I liked very much to, to work on that movie, M mixing at, at Abbey Road Studio, going through the whole process, working with a big studio like Paramount. Is, uh, is Diva Della Rosa, Della Rosa. Because when I came back from, from LA to the Netherlands to see what was happening here, I ran into that project uh, that was interesting because it gave me the, the, the possibility to uh, work for the R Romantic Symphony Orchestra on a movie and that was very, very peculiar and very special and very good, well, very, very well written. It was a, uh, it was a documentary that was worked out as a feature film on the situation of women during the black romance, let's say, 100, 120 years ago. And uh, it was made, newly cut out of made silent material from 1910 till 1920. And it was a very interesting project and musically, I could just write the romantic music for that, for that music, having the romantic orchestra, yeah. Die de Rosa is uh, consisting of three parts. It's about the position of women, like 120 years ago. The first part is the idyll of uh, romantic idyll that they have in their head and uh, meeting a man and uh, getting in love and uh, very romantic. And then they uh, getting married, that's part two. And then the idyll is over. They are uh, a, a sort of, of, of second-hand life behind the man. They are in the kitchen and they're not taking part so much in social life. Uh, and uh, the, the, the third part is uh, describing those, 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 those drifting souls of the women who are a sort of, of close to to that, they cannot do what they want. If they if they getting divorced, they might lose the children. They must lose everything. Um, so they are described as a sort of uh, of, of ghosts. Uh, one of the women uh, in in the movie is uh, on opium, and uh, during the scene uh, that I brought the music for. She's taking opium, is still having, living in the ideal, and then at the end of the scene, she dies. She just simply dies. <laughs>
I hope you enjoyed this episode. Don't forget, there's more to watch.